What's going on, everybody? Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Uh, today's actually Christmas Day that I'm recording this. I think I might even have the video come out today, too. I just got done, cooked some prime rib and stuff. So, ready to roll here. Real quick, I want to show you guys the new front camera that we'll get in today's video. Lock clear. Do you believe I have not bought a new camera since 2016? This is like 4K. Not not the price fight, but they're calling it like 4K definition. Kind of crazy. So we'll have some better quality uh, videos coming out for uh, reveals and stuff. So promised, it's here. All right, today's video, you guys probably wonder what is old tops versus fanatics tops versus panini versus um, upper deck. Well, it's definitely going to be something different today. I will tell you that. I forgot to pull one picture. And I just got to grab it here real quick. I actually did this video once. And I didn't really like the way I did it on to it. So you guys are going to see some flash up here real quick. I'll pull it off. Shrink it. All right. So a lot of people have been asking for my uh, one of my videos. Probably about a month or two ago. Where I started talking about where I'm going to change what I'm doing for 2024. My Basically my thought process behind it. It's kind of strange. You know, we're in a time to where there's so much change going on. At times, it can be overwhelming to adapt. In today's video, we're going to go back in time and go look at a few things that, you know, when I'm sitting here late at night, I just think of this stuff. And this is why I chose to start looking more back into upper deck products. Granted, they only do hockey, good one champions. And I believe we got some like Marvel and stuff like that onto it, but I'll get into it all. So let's go back in time here. I almost wanted to say twas, but I mean, who says twas really, except for twas the night before Christmas? But 1990, Topps Baseball. I don't know how many people were alive that watched the video door in 1990, but I could tell you, cell phones, yeah, probably weren't much around during that time frame. Pagers might have been coming around during that time frame. At least know in the next uh, part of this that, yeah, there were pagers. 1990, let's see. We had McDonald's had the 19 cents uh, hamburger and 29 cents cheeseburger. And pubs used to offer 10 cent wings and 25 cent pitchers of beer. All right, enough of the nostalgia stuff from 1990 that I could think of offhand. I was trying to think of some other things to top of my head. Like I said, I've done this video a few times. I just I think this is going to be the go around, hopefully. So if you're watching this and hearing me stutter and stammer, that's why. So 1990 tops. So what I want everybody to think about is as we progress through tops through the year or through the years. I mean, we in the old days they had sheets A through E or F. I forget, but they were big sets. So when we think about 1990 tops. I know, I know this is like kind of like the same thing to where we're over flooded with the same exact product. Um, I don't want to say Junk Wax Air 2.2, but just think about this 792 card set, right? 36 packs in a box. I'm just going to throw out 10 cards a pack. I think they were 12. So you get like 360 cards, or no, wait, 24, 24 packs a box. That'd be like 240 cards roughly, right? You have to go through about four boxes to complete a set. When you're thinking about that, four boxes to complete one set, 1990, what we had there, Frank Thomas. So in a case, you guys, if you're older, correct me if I'm wrong, these were 12 box cases back then, or were they still 10? I can't remember how they came in. They might have been 20s too. It's been a long time. But when you look at that there, we'll just say in a, if it was a 10-box case, you should be able to fill up, maybe make two and a half sets, right? In that, two to three Frank Thomas rookie cards, right? So, you know, back then we didn't have the internet and all that other stuff. So when you were setting up at your local flea markets and shows, you know, it was back to supply and demand. Unless people were going to travel all over, which we didn't start doing until, you know, probably the last seven, eight years. When we look at like today's products, regardless of who makes it, we'll stick with top. So, I mean, Julio Rodriguez, how many think you got in a case? At least six, seven base rookies compared to back then. And the sad part is, 
This is back in 1990. There was no Series 1, Series 2. There was just Tops. Then you had the traded one. Tops traded it would come out. So you're probably getting a lot more better pulls, you know, today. But you're also getting a lot more heavy on the base compared to back then. Even though we call it the Junk Wax era. A lot was produced today. Even more produced, I believe. So this is my first th thought process was, you know, we call it the Junk Wax era. But yet... Frank Thomas, I might get three if I'm lucky in a 10 box case. Versus if I bought a case of top series one hobby, I'm probably getting, you know, six of them in there, seven of them in there of the key rookie card. And I'm just basing this off of stuff when I used to break two years ago, what would come out. But that, that started having me thinking, I'm like, huh, okay, here. I moved on to 1993, right? So 1993 tops is whenever we started looking at Series 1 and Series 2 baseball. Here, Series 1 had 396 cards, Series 2 had 429 cards. So for like Derek Jeter being popped into this product, we'll say right off the bat, his stuff would be more plentiful in whenever you bought into whatever series he was in, 1 or 2, right? Compared to if he would have been in 1990 tops where you had 792 cards in a case, you'd only get two or three. So it starts making me think about production. You know, how everybody's ramped them up completely across the board and how much stuff is out there. And it's really started hitting me when I'm buying out collections or lots from people wanting to sell, you know. It, it just starts really coming together and you start seeing it and... You're like, wow, look at all this newer stuff compared to this guy here. And I bought a whole ton of stuff from like 1982 to 1995 from. Way more, I'm telling you. At least from what I'm observing, right? So these are just some of the key numbers I wanted you to remember. It's an 825 cards for the complete set. 729 here. But they broke it up between Series 1 and 2 where a Derek Jeter would be a lot easier to hit in your hobby box. Because they broke it up between Series 1 and 2 versus, you know, um, having just one big set. Moved on to thinking about 2023. So here we go. Where was that number at? 330 cards. So we went from 396 to 330. You know, 66 card difference. I got it. You know, they're, they're kind of stingy on who they're putting in there and everything. But... By the time we reached here, if you remember, 1993, we had the Black Golds, I believe, came out. Let me just make sure I'm not lying to you all. Pretty sure this was the blip. 44 Black Gold cards. And then you had the regular Gold card, which I think was equivalent to, like, what was it, one, two per box, maybe? It wasn't a whole lot. I know that. Um, but you start having your parallels, we'll call them here, somewhat. You come into today's products, and that same card, like this one Soto, could have 50 variations or colors or parallels to it. And we will just won't even count the variation pieces and stuff, but just they can have so many parallels from speckles to waves to lavas to, you know, the original, you know, red gold and everything. Just look at all this. Crazy when you start looking at Pettis Day, Vintage Stock. Now, a lot of this stuff's been around for a while, but they keep adding more and more. We, we really start seeing this when we start hitting Topps Chrome, Bowman Chrome. Think about throwing Sapphire into it as well. Just another variation on this stuff. So I thought about old Tops versus new Tops and the promises that were made to us by Fanatics. Saying, oh, we're going to decrease parallels and all this other stuff, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I look at them like, you haven't done anything. So... For me in 2024, I'm really not going to buy any wax. Now, if I win a box or something like that, so granted, I'd open it because I'm in it for a very low amount. And everybody knows I'm really was like one of the bigger tops defensive guys. Loved it. That and Diamond Icons, right? It's just not affordable anymore. I mean, if you really look at it, when I started, when Dynasty came out, I think it was $400 a box. Now we're at 1000 Look at what you made in 2016 and then look at it now and then figure, you know, what they usually average, 3% pay raise per year. It's, it's unaffordable for the average person, to be honest, when I'm looking at it. 
unless you really saved up, you have no bills, all that stuff there. But our yearly revenue, you know, didn't double, triple over two and a half fold times itself, you know, in that time frame. That's really hard unless you got promoted and stuff. But same stable job across the board on to it. You know, I just look at it and I'm like, how is people today supposed to be able to go out there and get defended baseball? It used to be like, oh, I want to say we were paying five, six hundred dollars for a box. It was expensive. You know, you still have your moaners and groaners out there, but now when you're talking fifteen hundred for a box, you're like, oh, you know, craziness, right? So I pretty much killed out tops fanatics out of the whole thing. I wish we'd go back to the old tops kind of mentality to where cards that were SP, like if you go into the Don Russ, you look at like the Elite series that was real big in the early 90s, there was like one a case. That's truly an SP. Not, oh, you're going to get one that short print card per box, blah, 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 blah. Autographs, you know, occasionally as time progresses, you got one per box or an autograph relic per box. Now there's stuff, you know, you get five autographs per box in. Kind of crazy. But that's what made me think I'm staying away from Fanatics and Tops, buying any products. So if I want the card, I will just go out and buy it. Then came my next mentality point, Panini. Losing licensing. You know, their stuff has just not been very stable. And I sit there and think about it. Once Panini no longer can make licensed cards of NBA and NFL, you know, I'm sure there's some kind of good idea fairy out there with how they'll stay afloat. Will their stuff from that time frame of like 2010-ish, you know, and forward, is it going to hold a premium or not? You know, people still hunt upper deck old boxes. I, I don't know if people will Panini or not. I mean, comment in the comment section if you think they will. I, I just, I wouldn't be one of my top things like, ooh, let me go see what old Panini boxes I can buy real cheap, you know. Upper deck, I can do it all day long. So, where'd it go? Oh, it's right here. Let me throw this onto the screen now. So this is something I did a little while ago. You guys remember this. This was the number of parallels of prison basketball. And this was up to the 2021 one uh, year. And you can just see the amount of parallels that just kept going on and on and on. Again, we keep producing more product. We ruined Select. I will not touch that anymore um, with the, what I was upset about, still upset about to this day, making a retail product. Same with Optic as well. I mean, it's just, one of those things, I mean, Select, I thought they were going to hold out on Optic. I knew, I think it was in 2016, 17-ish, that they were going to start doing retail with them. But we just keep adding more and more parallels. So that one rookie card, 45 versions. I bet you, and today, if we would count them up, I bet you we're at least at 60. Because we've had every type of skin there is. Dragon scale, snake skin, elephant skin, leopard skin. I forget them all. There's just so many. And it makes me wonder, do I want to put money into Panini, you know, and they're going out and they're just producing a crap load of cards every which way? The answer simply in 2024, no, I don't. Again, I will not pass up any steals and deals on the cards that I can use to trade or sell to gain stuff that I like, but I won't openly just be out there to buy Panini products in 2024 for this reason. Nobody's controlling the amount of, I guess you could say, cards that are coming out. And if you look at, like I said, the 80s and even into the 90s, you know, they may have been produced a lot to where grocery stores and everybody had them. But they didn't throw out, you know, 10,000 variations onto everything. I know 10,000 is a big number, but 50 plus variation parallels out there of every card, too. It kind of makes it hard to collect. I mean, initially, you know, 2000 was, I'd say, about 14, 15 through like 1920. You had your guys who would chase the rainbows of colors. Now, can you imagine trying to chase one that has like 60 parallels and you have like two different one-on-ones in Panini because you have the fast break one-on-one and then like the regular one-on-one craziness, huh? So that, that was my initial thought. I'm not going to really go out and purchase Panini wax at all. It, it makes no sense to do it. And the older stuff's just, it's just stupid in price still. All right. 
I forgot to bring up the upper deck. So we're just going to go and use this here. Uh, we'll use this one. That bleeds us to our last one. Now, I didn't count Leaf into this or Wild Card and everything like that. It's just I'm just not huge fans of it. I know there are people out there that are. I'm just not. So Upper Deck, I started thinking about them because I was like, man, what do I really want to do? I might just have to buy singles and look for bulk lots that I could buy, you know, to use, move on Com C, pick up stuff I like. Thought about Upper Deck. Always loved their photos. I love that they were ahead of everybody else in the beginning with everything they were doing. They had key players that nobody else could get autographs, i.e. Jordan, LeBron, Wayne Gretzky, uh, we think Tiger Woods, Serena Williams. It goes on. There's more on to it. So I started thinking, I'm like, well, what has Upper Deck really done different in hockey from like Sidney Crosby's rookie year on? And I started thinking about it. I'm like, well, they don't even really have that many parallels, you know. Dorm McDavid's rookie year, we had, you know, like High Gloss and what the heck was the other one called? It's it's eluding me now. Let me scroll down here. Exclusives, that's what it was. Exclusives out of 100 and High Gloss out of 10. So really, there's only two parallels. They added two more to it, okay? Clear Cut and French. Still, with the odds, you know, one clear cut per 96 packs, that's pretty hard hit, you know, that's... What, four boxes roughly, and then French about every box and a half or so. It's like, all right, I'm liking it. I mean, they did add upper deck canvas. I forgot about those now that I think about it. You can still get your printing plates. But their flagship versus, you know, regular tops. And for me, I think Prism is Panini's flagship when I really think about it right now. Upper deck is their series one. It's all about the young gun chase. You may hit a rally card here or there. You may hit some autograph here or there, but it's not that it's, you know, you can expect that every single box you're going to get X amount of autographs or memorabilia. Kind of crazy. And then when I look at it, you got to remember Series 1 and Series 2 is broken up. Oh, I was looking for a total number of cards. Now, hockey is going to be like basketball. It's going to be a lower number. Nope, oh, that's not it. And I do, I'll get into those there in a second. I just wanted to see the total number. 198 base cards and 49 young guns, which are your rookie cards, and three checklists. Which I, I applaud. They still do checklist cards. It's awesome. So 198 base cards plus your 49. So you're looking roughly like 150, 160 cards. Or wait, I'm sorry, 250. Yeah, 250 cards roughly in a set for Series 1. Now, granted, they do have their inserts, just like if you think back in Fleer Ultra and Tops, and everybody did. You got um, one, two, three. Three of them. There's your jersey cards. So, on average, one clear cut parallel, possibly upper deck jersey or other hit card. Six young guns, so you're getting six rookies per box, four canvases. It gives you your breakdown. Granted, they gave it a little bit more than they did back in McDavid's rookie year, but they've been consistent. So I really thought about it, and I was like, you know, they're not really amping up their production so they could produce more parallels at all. They're pretty much might have upped it because they had some inserts to it. Then, you know, maybe we got to do a couple, you know, 50 extra cases to make sense to add clear cuts and French to it or whatever it may be. I was like, well, there's not a whole lot of people who do hockey, especially in my area. It's really, really hard to find hockey. And when you do, it's somebody's been sitting on it for a while and they just want to move it. Um, that's just at least in the Kentucky area. When you start getting up towards Indianapolis, you know, for the bigger shows, hockey can move and people look for it. But I can tell you in a handful, <laughs> on a hand, I should say, that there's like a handful of people that will come by and ask me about hockey at any other show. Lexington, Louisville, um, can we even throw in like when I was setting up at Salem, Indiana, to Newburgh, Indiana. Nashville, different animal, bigger, bigger venue. You're going to have people looking for hockey plus the Predators are there. I still like the overall concept the Upper Deck does. And I will tell you, I've gotten more BGS 10s back in the day, BGS. 
and black labels from Upper Deck Series 1 Young Guns that I ever got from Prism or any Panini product or Topps product. Kind of crazy to say that. I don't know who they use to produce their uh, cards and stuff like that, but they just do much better on the grading. And when you look at the card, you're not getting a whole ton of like scratch marks and all that stuff onto. Granted, you're going to have your issues with your thicker cards like SPX, uh, Premier, even their big one, the Cup, which is kind of like NT or Flawless for the other uh, sports. But, you know, overall, it's still, I think, Upper Deck it has a good idea what they're doing. They They like their own little area of NHL. Um, they're good win champions along with whatever else they do from like the Marvel side of the house, non-sports stuff. So that that's why I decided I'm going to start buying some upper deck. It'll have to be hockey or good wins champions. You guys will see it on. Hear me open it. I know Wildcat, you'll be like, ah, this sucks. There's no football. But for me, this this will bring it to make it fun again for me. When you're sitting there spending, and I'll use an example. I just looked the cup hockey up. Ah. Uh, Six box case was like sixty five hundred. That's their premier. So you're looking at like a thousand seventy dollars a box. That's way less than NT, impeccable, flawless, and everything else. And the big difference is the patches are normally game worn. They're not just some piece of fabric they threw in there saying not from any specific game or da 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 or player worn. You know, it's not something they pulled off the shelf like, hey, look, it's uh, Pat Mahomes. We'll just cut this jersey up and throw it in there. He didn't wear it, but hey, it's a jersey piece, you know. Those are my thoughts, you know, onto the whole thing. And I should put a full disclaimer, you know, onto the video. I should have did it in the beginning. I forgot. This is all just my own opinion, guys, and what I'm looking at doing. No way am I trying to tell you, hey, everybody dump all the other sports. Let's go hockey hunting. No, it's just what I'm going to do for the majority if I'm going to open up wax. Well, I still... Oops, I don't know where it's at. Here it is. Well, I still buy cards like this. Yeah, well, I still grade them. Yeah, if I could find them raw and it makes sense to grade, make some money and buy, you know, some vintage or whatever. Yeah, well, I still buy collections out, contain this stuff. Oh, yeah. No problem whatsoever on that. Like I said, it makes sense to where, you know, I can make some extra money of doing some hard work and put it to, you know, buying something nice for the PC or something like that's a rare find. Definitely will do it. But this is what I was talking about in the other videos for a lot of people that were asking me uh, stuff through emails and PMs and phone calls and everything else. It's a, it's hard to really explain this. I did. I looked at every one i looked at tops versus new tops fanatics versus panini versus upper deck when i did this and if it was all tops you know with the way they were doing stuff even through the beginning of the 2000s i'd probably be like okay cool i'll roll with it but with fanatics taking over it's just gotten worse in my opinion panini they're about to be gone you know very shortly licensing i think what's football ends i think uh 2024 is our last year of doing that then basketball is the following year, if I recall right. Upper Deck still gets to hold their licensing for hockey. Um, they still produce quality cards. And like I said, I've opened up some stuff. They have Upper Deck E-Pack, all that stuff. But yeah, that's pretty much was was going through my thought process for about two months or so when I was started talking videos about and i'm like i'll put a video out later on too and then i pushed something kind of out and it really didn't explain what i was trying to do hopefully this makes a little more sense and shows you where i came to my conclusion on what i would buy for wax this year it'll be upper deck hockey or goodwin champions i don't think we're gonna do any marvel or wrestling and stuff like that because the price that you pay for like spx under 100 dollars a box it just makes more sense you know, why would I go out and spend $1,500 on a box of uh, Definitive and get killed when I can buy 15 boxes of SPX and still have a little bit of money left or maybe get a 16th box and have a whole ton of autos and fun opening it? And that's where, like I said, it comes back to having fun more this year. Of course, you still have the business sense it has to go on to with it all. But I want to have more fun this year than, you know, previous years. All right, guys.
if you stuck around this long, I appreciate it. I know we're going over 25 minutes by the time I get done talking here in a second. But I wanted to put this out just so everybody could understand where I was coming from. Uh, people ask me, oh, are you still going to be buying baseball, basketball, football? Of course, but I won't buy wax. I won't buy base cards. You know, if I go to a show and I see... Oh, let me think here of something that I might want to grab a hold of. I don't know. Just say the Steelers draft another top hot quarterback and they get rid of Kenny Pickett. Yeah, I'll still buy some of his rookie cards and rookie autos from whoever's producing it. But you won't see him buying box on box and case on case trying to chase it. It makes no sense. I want to. I'd rather just buy the card. Get it graded, slabbed. Hopefully it's a 10 and move on from it. But for fun, I think hockey would be the best bet for myself right now. Plus, you know, I watch hockey. A lot of people don't watch it. All right, guys, that is it for the video. I appreciate, as always, you guys watching, listening. Look forward to some comments on to everybody what you guys think. You know, are you going to buy Topps products, Topps with Alex products this year, I should say? Are you going to buy any Panini? Are you going to venture into Upper Deck Land? You know, are you going to look more at just buying Leaf or Wild Card? I think that's all there is out there and stuff like that. Or are you just going to call it quits on, you know, buying stuff and, you know, just watch and see what happens to the over the next year? Going to have some more crash and burning. I'm not going to talk about overall prices in this video. I think we're still going to be on a little bit of a decline next year. They'll still go up with player performances and stuff. I think hockey will do real good. They're kind of behind from where their products should be. Like the cup that just came out is 21 22. So we still have last season at 22-23. Then you have this year's, which has Connor Bedard in it, which is your uh, big uh, chase. Like Everybody talks about him like uh, McDavid and Crosby whenever they came out. So I'm sure those prices will probably go up just because everybody thinks he's a good talent. I've watched some of his games. He's done well. But other than that, I'm done. I've been jabbering on too much. See what happens when you eat too much prime rib, guys. All right. You guys have a good safe one if i don't put anything out or come live have a good safe new year um but i'll be back next year we'll look at opening up some wax we'll go a little bit more into depth with com c uh some of the show stuff going on i'm gonna limit it, like very limited on shows i'll set up at next year and i think i'm gonna look at seeing how between com c uh doing live sales on zoom with people and stuff like that work out versus setting up at shows sitting there and you know people all coming up wanting to buy stuff at 70 percent all right take care catch y'all next one